Atlanta Motor Speedway, 450 post-race press conference. Congratulations, Jason Anderson on the big win. Eli Tomac, Chase Sexton rounding out the top three on the podium. Uh, Jason, I'll start with you. You had some wins early in the season, right there back and forth, getting a win almost every other weekend, then had a rough batch. Um, what was that like for you, and, and how did you process that last, say, month and a half where the speed was there, but there was just mistakes along the way? How did you fight through that, regroup, and get the big one here today? Yeah, you know, um, it's like I, I had everything going for me there for a little bit, and then um, once we got to Daytona, it kind of fell apart, and it was frustrating, though, because it's like um, it was just situations that – should, shouldn't be happening and it's uh it's just reading reading the race and managing managing it a little bit better and uh it, it's tough to you know keep pushing and, and trying whenever it seems like nothing's going right there for a second but um to get this win and, and stuff like that is is good you know last weekend I was kind of bummed because you know the off weekend I feel like I um, made some good progress and had the had a little bit of a cold last weekend and then this weekend felt better but it's, you're still not you still kind of doubt yourself a little bit but to be able to get that win feels um feels really good and how was the track today i i mean it it obviously had its changes but mid main event there when it was the most important what was it like for you yeah it, it wasn't too terrible you know it was really slick in practice um you know and and the whoops they were kind of like cupped but they weren't actually too terrible and uh not too sketchy but um, it kept you on your toes and, uh, the high speedness is, um, of the track is, is kind of intimidating. Um, especially yesterday when you saw all those huge jumps and stuff like that. And thankfully they tamed her down a little bit, but, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of an intimidating track cause, uh, Daytona, I don't think it's as big and I think it's uh, a little more sandy. So it keeps the pace down a little bit, but this, uh, Georgia clay is uh, a little bit more high speed. So, but it's good. Good track. Congratulations. Uh, Jamie, Moto X Pod. Uh, Jason, you kind of answered my question that I was going to ask you from your Twitter comments yesterday. You didn't seem to like the track, uh, but I feel like it came around quite a bit. It, it made for some good racing. Uh, did it change your opinion? I know you just said it was a good track, but it did, did it change your opinion from yesterday? Yeah, uh, to be honest, it's like right now I believe that 80% of the 450 class is out with injury, you know? And then I, I think like, you know, 120-foot triple – I understand they want shock value for the fans to be like, dude, longest start straight, longest triple. But at this, at the end of the day, like, we're four rounds away from the end. Let us get through the season, have good racing. Dude, we're all going to have to hit the triple. But I, it's going to rain, too, and we're all still going to try and hit the triple, you know? Um, luckily, the track ended up good. But um, I just think... Uh, you know, the shock value that they're trying to get out of some of the obstacles they put in is a little bit too much for us racers and, and our safety, you know. Um, but at the same time, I understand where their head's at, but us as racers, we're humans and we want to stay safe and uh, we want to limit the risk and we know the risk that we take. And when they make it a little bit bigger and um, we don't really have control over that, it's a little bit frustrating for me personally, you know. And uh, I hate to be like the Karen, but at the at the same time, it's a... Uh, I, I feel like someone needs to speak, you know, or I need to speak to, you know, if the, if something happened to me on one of those jumps, I'd be frustrated if I didn't say anything, you know. Yeah, I, I hear where you come from. There was a couple guys that case that thing, and I think there is definitely a line. You got to cut, you got to draw somewhere. What, what's too much? What's not enough? So yeah, thanks, man. Yep. Revista uh, uh, Moto. Hey, thank you, Daniel. Hey, uh, Chase Sexton. You, it looked like it was your your race your race to win today. You had a, a slight crash or fall. How do you compose yourself to get back on the podium today? Yeah, it was uh, it was a really good day for me riding wise. Um, felt really good with the track. I felt good here, obviously last year, and then coming back here, I was excited. So um, the rain made the track pretty technical. It was pretty fast still, but I think it slowed it down a tad bit. So. Um, yeah, I put myself in a really good position in the main event to, to win. I knew Jason was going to be good and Eli, obviously. So I kind of wanted to sprint away and just came into that corner. And um, it's I couldn't really save it. It just was gone so fast. So had to kind of gather my thoughts and uh, just push forward. I knew that I could probably make it back to the podium if I rode like I knew how. And that was that was my goal after my fall. So um, yeah, thankful to be back up here. But Obviously, I want to be um, where Jason's sitting, but it's he rode really well, like I said, and just um, keep plugging along. Thank you. Uh, Brad Gephardt. 
Thanks, Daniel. Brad Gebhardt, Big MX Radio. Let's go to Eli, and uh, Jason can touch on this as well. I want to go back to the heat race battle you guys had. Just looked like a lot of fun, the two of you going back and forth a little bit. Take me through that, and uh, also that uh, little bit of a scary moment as you came out from under the over-under ridge. <clears throat> yeah, we had a good battle. Um, and and I, I initially uh, was going on that left side in the, uh, the sand, right, and I was making up time there, and then finally was able to get close to his wheel in that turn. Um, and then made the run up the left side, and then uh, we go off the triple, and then uh, I just left the door open again um, in the sweeper. So um, that that was that. Try it, and then a uh, white flag came around, and then I I tried to do the same sort of move he did to me, and I was a little bit too far back and slid out. But uh, yeah, that that heat race was, was a good push. Yeah, awesome, great racing. Um, but yeah, it was it was a good battle, and um, <laughs> it's it's for me. I kept feeling him. Uh, I'm telling you that Yamaha is so loud where the where the the air intake is. You could hear it from far behind, and I felt it getting louder after that sand section every time. And um, I'm sure you know it's it was tough to pass, and especially those heat races, it's tough to pass. So it was a good battle, but yeah. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, Jason Wagant. Yeah, thanks, Jason, for Racer X. Uh, to you, Eli, uh, just what happened there at the beginning of the second lap, it seemed like, at the main, you lost a couple spots. It seemed like you slowed down, and then you picked it back up. Was there a problem there? Because uh, the rest of the race seemed fine. Yeah, I uh, I don't know if I missed the, the a couple rhythm lanes that lap, or at least one. And then I got past, I believe it was by Malcolm for a second. And it might, I don't know, my first couple laps were super lousy. Um, that's the only way I can put it is, uh, you know, the, and then the front guys got away. Uh, Jason got away, Chase got away, um, and then came alive a little bit at the end, but it was it was way too late. Jonathan McCready. Jonathan McCready, getdrop.com. Question for Eli. You clinching the Supercross title. Have you had a chance to think about outdoors on the Jeffy Hardings and Tony Caroli maybe racing all the injured riders from Supercross coming back? Is that on your mind? Are you still fully focused on the Supercross title in, in the weekdays? Uh, of course I'm focused on Supercross and uh, want to just keep plugging along with what we got going on. Uh, and then for those two guys, it, if they came over, it would be, I mean, it's going to be awesome competition, you know. Um, <clears throat> yeah, all I can say is it's just going to be a lot of competition. Um, it'll be new tracks for them, but, uh, you know, they're, they're obviously – really fast so um i'm sure we'll have some great battles if they do come over and just on the yamaha outdoors are you looking forward to riding that bike because i think for me you're like the most comfortable you ever have in supercross yeah it? yeah i'm really excited to to give her the test in the outdoors and i think uh you know i i really think it'll shine shine in, in motocross so i'm excited thank you uh ryan with cycle news Thanks, Daniel. Yeah, this one's for Eli as well. Eli, you had a big moment in that heat race and then kind of a slow start in the, the main. You kind of touched on that already, but can you just take us through that moment in the heat race and then kind of just the changing track conditions and how that affected your race? Yeah, so the <clears throat> the one in the heat race, I went under the tunnel and I was just a little bit outside and was going a little too fast. And then the, the way that berm uh, had the little tail on the end of it, my rear end hit it. And then I got, got pretty wild. It was, should have been a high side that I somehow saved. Uh, it was it was just uh, buck wild, and then in the main event there, I I was missing um, I missed that middle rhythm lane. It was it was once if not twice, and that that would make you lose a lot of momentum into that sand. So I lost some time there, and then uh, whenever the, the time that Malcolm almost got by me, I forget exactly where it was, but uh, yeah. So just a couple too many mistakes. Uh, Michael Lindsay. Hey, my uh, question is for Chase Sexton. Um, Chase, after, like I said, kind of a rough five or six weeks, what's it taken for you to get kind of confidence back in what's going on? Because I can imagine other than just wanting to get your mojo back, um, the confidence had to take a hit with everything that's been going on. Yeah, conf confidence definitely took a hit after, I mean, there's I had to have a decent race, then a really bad one, another decent one, then it just felt like I couldn't get – any uh, momentum going and then finally um we came Hana came down and did some testing on supercross and immediately we found as soon as we found something that made the bike a little bit more comfortable for me i my riding came back to 
how I was riding preseason and the first couple of races. And then really after that, even in practice, my confidence came back up before I even raced last weekend. So um, that was really good and um, definitely uh, was just something that I needed to get back to be up back up on the podium. So I'm just uh, excited for that and finish out these last three races strong. Uh, Nick with Moto Limited. Thank you. Yeah, let's go to Eli Tomac. Eli, we heard Jason Anderson talk about the track and some of these obstacles that have been the last few weeks. Can you just give your thoughts on that and, you know, riding out for press day, seeing these jumps and, you know, the sort of depleted feel we currently got with the amount of injuries? What's your thoughts on the tracks recently? <clears throat> well, this one specifically, it was just, it was over the top. And I was, I was out there. I was one of the guys out there uh, kicking and screaming about the big triple. Um, it was... For one, it was ridiculously long, right, 100 and something feet. And then two, they they gave us no no forgive forgiveness to the landing. And my I was just like, man, if you're gonna build something that big, at least make it to where we can be short without getting totally jacked. And um, of course, you know, we do it the first session. I'm like, wow, that thing's pretty gnarly, pretty sketchy. And then I go out there and you, or you sit there on the line and you see the 250 guys go. I'm like. I was pretty sure someone was going to crash, and then sure enough, Hunter goes over the thing and then just explodes right on the landing. Um, so yeah, I I was I was frustrated about it, and like Jason said, it's just and everyone's been saying it's unnecessary. There's too many guys out, um, and if they want a massive huck, at least give us a good landing. So yeah, that's Thanks my take on it. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Uh, Don Maeda. Hey, Eli, uh, obviously you're going to wrap things up next weekend, barring any disaster. Uh, do you go into that race to win, just to wrap it up? And then if you wrap it up, how do you uh, approach the last two? Well, I don't know the exact point spread now. I just think I have to be close to Jason. I don't know exactly who's in second. But, um, yeah, I just, I just got to focus, you know. Um, and, and try to try to aim for that podium. I think if I get podium, it'll, it'll do it. I, I don't know. We'll have to go back and see. But, uh, um, yeah, that's all we can do is, is go race it and try to be solid. But when you wrap it up. What's that? Do you, uh, if you wrap it up, though, do you go to uh, try to get some more wins in the last two races to break this tie with Reed? Oh, sorry. Sorry, I, I missed you. Um, well, yeah, I mean, if, if you wrap something up early, right, you're going to go, you know, at that point you have nothing to lose. So, um, heck, yeah, I'll try to go win. Uh, Billy Rainford. Hey, sorry, thank you, Daniel. Uh, yeah, um, I was just wondering, uh, guys, historically Atlanta has, like, some of the biggest crowds in the stadiums, like 70,000 people historically over the years. Do you prefer, like, would you rather have been in the stadium like years past, or are you guys happy with this wider open, taking a chance with the weather? Which one would you guys prefer? Each of you guys. Eli, we'll start with you and work down. Well, if they keep the 120 foot triples out, <laughs> another speedway track's all right. You know, uh, this one's this one's gnarly. I, to me, it's I don't know if they're just trying to outdo Daytona or something, but I don't think we need that. I think just <coughs> whatever, build a normal track, and you know, and, and we'll go we'll go make the race in you know the way we do, and we'll battle well, and uh, we don't need the gnarly obstacles. Um, yeah, me, I honestly I like the bigger tracks, I like the higher speed tracks. So for me, I'd, I would rather have this one than uh, indoor Atlanta inside. Jason. Yeah, for me, I I, uh, I actually ride good here, but I, I still I don't know uh, if I like it as much as I like uh, racing, you know, like obviously in the Georgia Dome and stuff like that, because I feel like that stadium in Atlanta and the Supercross in Atlanta, like in the stadiums in the city are so like um, nostalgic a little bit with all the battling and stuff that's gone on inside there. And um, yeah, I like this one, but I I really liked racing in the stadium, too. But um, all in all, it's a. Uh, if you keep the track normal, like like Eli said, I uh, I think the racing is good here, and I think uh, the fans were were here, so it was pretty cool. For me, I uh, I never got to race the 450 class inside the whatever whatever the stadium was last time, but I did race 250 there. I liked it. Um, out here, I think it's good because we get more dirt. 
Um, and obviously the jumps, I think, are a little bit peakier. And I don't know. For me, I just think it's a little bit technical. Not that the ones inside aren't, but this one definitely, it's a risk versus reward kind of track. And I think it does, it has suited me the last couple of years. But um, I just think more dirt, the jumps are a little, not like the triple lap yesterday, but like just the rhythm sections and stuff like that. The whoops are good usually. So, and dirt's good here. So I, I probably prefer it here. <clears throat> Thanks, guys. It's interesting. Thank you. Uh, two more. We'll go with Dan Colvin and then uh, Jason Wagant and close it up for us. Dan. Hey, thanks. Uh, Dan with Main Event Moto. Uh, Jason, this question's for you. Uh, you seem like you've got the Kawasaki figured out, but is there stuff that you're still learning about the bike this late in the season? And can you also talk about uh, Brock Tickle's influence on the bike with setup and also just as coaching? Yeah. Uh, for me, I, I rode a steel frame for eight years, so there's still some times where it catches me off guard. And I think that's a lot of my mistakes this year, just trying to, um, even though I've been having success on it, I still feel like there's some times where I don't um, read the way it works. Um, yeah, but um, obviously, you know, we have Brock, and uh, I think the team has been working really well with being a little bit more open-minded, and I think Brock is a good influence because uh, – He's very smart, you know, he's he's awesome. Um, and the cool thing about training with him is uh, he's obviously, you know, one of my friends. Uh, we trained together with Alden back in the day, so um, we uh, bounce ideas off of each other, and it's nothing like, not like we're doing anything crazy. I mean, everyone does basically the same thing to get ready, but um, Brock understands it a little bit more just being in it, so um, it's cool having him on my side. And Jason Wagant. Thanks. I'll go to you, Jason Anderson. Uh, a rough couple of weeks there. Hadn't had a win in a while. Uh, how satisfactory is it to keep on digging and then get this? And it seemed also with the crowd right there that you were extra excited when you came across the finish. <laughs> Dude, like I said, at any point right now, any win, I'm, I'm damn excited to go out there and, and – uh, get a W and, um, it feels good. Um, especially after, you know, not being, um, having a little bit of chaos go on and it just seems sometimes like you can't, um, see the light at the end of the tunnel and, uh, to break through and be able to get a win and, and ride well. And, uh, it's, uh, gives you that motivation to keep going. You know, um, it's tough whenever you keep, keep getting uh, beat down a little bit and I, everyone in our sport understands that you know and it's tough to keep going but it's just part of it it's the nature of the beast and uh but for some reason as stressful as it is we keep coming back for more so it's uh it's pretty awesome good right. stuff thanks yep. well, congratulations guys i'll see you next saturday in foxborough thank you